Let's talk now about uh, the Ghana Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists uh, who are talking about pushing for an implementation of the laboratory services policy that was passed, but they're not seeing anything that is happening. Uh, speaking to Timo, pardon me, Franklin Ni Ama Amate, who is the general, uh, sorry, the Greater Accra Regional Chairman of the Ghana Association of Medical Laboratory Services, GAMS, as well as Prosper Senyo Sokbe, communications team member of the same association. You're welcome to TV3 New Day. Thank you. How are you doing? Uh, we can't complain. We are good. You can't complain. Yeah. Are you sure? Because you are complaining about something. <laughs> well, <laughs> Well, it, we have been pushed to complain. Complain. <laughs> okay, that's nice. Let's talk a bit about, um, you know, GAMS in the first place. Why was GAMS established? Will, will uh, Franklin take it? Yeah, so, so GAMS is just a group of medical laboratory professionals. Okay. Normally, it's better if you come together and then you speak with one voice. Okay. So just like you have Ghana Bar Association, a mm. group of lawyers... Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAST. Yeah. GAMS is also there for medical laboratory professionals. Okay. Because the group is so amorphous. Mm -hmm. We are people in academia. Mm -hmm. We are people in the hospitals. We are people in research. Okay. And, and, and a lot of other places right. where we have our members. Mm. What it means is that if you do not come together, mm. you will have a fragmented issues okay. and you will not be able to speak with one voice mm. and so GAMS is an umbrella body yeah. where all these groupings are together and we speak with one voice. With one voice. Yes, uh, I, I understand that laboratory services are indeed very, very imperative here. I mean, in any health sector, yes, um, in any health sector, if you are able, so, a lot of people have actually missed out on life because of wrongful, you know, practices in this regard. So let's talk a bit then about, um, you know, regulation or the policy that was not, um, that was passed but has not actually been moved to action. Why do you think that it's not actually being implemented now? So. Well, this morning, I'm struggling okay. to put a very gloomy picture, you know, a bit milder. Okay. So that we do not cause the necessary panic. But I'm struggling. I'm unable mm. to do it. Because the laboratory sector, as we have it in Ghana now, mm. is in disarray. Mm. Why am I saying that? There is no coordinated effort. Mm. So we are all doing things in bits and pieces, in fragments. Yeah. And everything is not properly coordinated. And the better we sit up and implement the policy, mm. the better for us. What is the issue? What do you mean by things are not being coordinated? What aspects of it? Because if you are doing your jobs individually in whichever institutions you find yourself, why do you need to have a co coordinated um, effort? Why we need a coordinated effort is that the hospital setting, how do we have it? Mm -hmm. We have health centers, mm -hmm. we have polyclinics, mm -hmm. we have uh, teaching hospitals, and in that order. Yeah. Now, there should be proper segregation of what health centers can do at the laboratory level. Mm. There should be proper coordinated effort of what polyclinics can do, what district hospitals okay. can do, so that where the health centers do not have capacity, it is properly principled or coordinated that you go to this level okay. and you can get redress. Okay. You see, I have had opportunities to work in the village before. Okay. And sometimes at my district level, when we are unable to perform the test for them, we refer people as far as New Edisbiasi to go to Kumasi Konfanochi to get their test wow. done. Now, in this policy, mm -hmm. is a certain structure that will allow for samples to be transported to Kumasi okay. and not necessarily asking that poor patient to, to travel all themselves. the way from Tumu to go to Konfanochi right. to do his test. Okay. And that is why I insist that if we do not do something about this disarray situation, yeah. Ghanaians are shortchanged. Hmm. That's a very interesting one. Senor, what, do you, what would you say are the other challenges that you have faced all through you know, working within this uh, space. That's what's calling for the implementation of this uh, policy. Yeah, thank you. Um, when you look uh, at most laboratories in Ghana, mm. I think it's one of the, it's afterthought 
when they are even building the hospitals. Really? It's afterthought. Some of the laboratories even look like a hand coop. Wow. There's no space. Mm. Even your laboratory manager does not even have his own office, which is supposed to be so. All these things are part or are in the laboratory health policy mm. that are supposed to address infrastructure. Okay. But it is not there. Sometimes the building will set up the, the they'll, they'll finish the facility mm. before thinking about where they should go and With put the laboratory, the laboratory which is but, very, very, very important in, in part of in running our services. But is it imperative that, uh, is it a law, is it stated that every health institution has to have a laboratory? Because I, I know that there are some um, labs that run independently. And so if you need to run you know, your tests, you go to the lab, which is an independent business. Yeah, we have those people who are in the private sector, mm. stand, the stand and no labs that okay. are there that are supposed to do that. As you said, we are supposed to have a primary uh, labs. We are supposed to have the tertiary mm. labs also as well. Okay. We are supposed to have, like, so that when you are able to do the basics, let's say mm. for malaria, there's no need for you to go to Kolebu that are going to do a malaria test there. Okay. Your district or a stand and no lab should be able to do that. Okay. But okay. there are specialized tests. Mm. that you can't run in that primary healthcare lab. Okay. You cannot run it over there. Okay. For example, DNA, you can't run it at that primary setup. Okay. It's supposed to be at a specialized lab, let's say a teaching hospital, mm. or a specialized lab that has been set up to do that kind of thing. Mm. But these things are not there. For example, when equipment, you have equipment, many people just import equipment to their country mm. without proper regulation without property mm -hmm. running the same kind of lab you have more than 10 or 15 different uh, lab equipment doing the same job but if the policy is there mm. it regulates some of these things it regulates Even the kind of equipment the kind of equipment that's supposed to be there to run this thing they are so, supposed to do that but if you have so uh, a variety of equipment that's going to do the same thing isn't that to your benefit so you're able to do so many things at the same time because they they bring this substandard uh, cheap right. uh, equipment to the country without any proper monitoring or evaluation to know whether what has come to run this test mm. is it fit to be able to do that okay. kind of job. Okay. It is not there. Moreover, we are also supposed to have research labs that, and research and development. There's mm. no funds maybe for able to be able to do research to know right. maybe a certain disease mm. that, that is or an outbreak or that kind of thing. Mm. Sometimes you, you realize that when this kind of thing happened at the Kumaka. That's the Kumasi High, mm. and those kind of fine. There's no Gucci there. But if they were to be a lab, a, a proper setup, setup or in the system, there should be. You don't have to carry all the things back to Accra to come and run. Let's check it. If okay. the policies does, and then we to dispose of our waste and everything is in it's there. It's in the policy. It's, it's in just the that policy. It's not being implemented. Yeah. It's wow, so policy. who are you in talks with then to make sure that this policy is actually, you know, moving, it's implemented? I think so when the, the Minister results. for Health came, mm -hmm. that when they came into power in 2017, mm -hmm. we went to go and meet him and welcome him, uh, welcome him over there. And then we talked about the policy issue as part of the thing. When we spoke, he said, ah, how come we have a policy and the policy is not being yes. implemented? And we told him in 2013, uh, Honorable Shalayiti, uh, was able to, we, we, they signed. Yeah. This document was signed. And then the implementation became a problem. You could not do that. So this is the document. They said we should go and bring it. We brought a document to yeah. them. Only for us to see a, a memo that has been written to the minister asking mm -hmm. him not to implement the policy. Wow. Because some and people... what was the reason? Yes, some people, the medics, mm -hmm. the doctors, yes. feel that they are supposed to be our heads. Mm. They are supposed to be heads in all the lab, but they are not uh, the they are people. Not lab they are not lab experts in, right. the, in the field. So they but work with you. They, they work with that, mm. but they want to be at our top. Is that, then, that's the reason that you That's caused. the reason. That's what, that's what we are suspecting. That okay. This is what is causing the delay in implementation mm. of the lab, the, the lab policy. Yeah. The Ghana, for more than 50 years or 60 years, no national health laboratory policy. Yeah. And but it is imperative. This, this is not good at all. And we are thinking about the patients, the people that come in. Yeah. If you don't have any proper coordinated uh, effort to be able to put this laboratory policy in place, whatever that we are doing mm. will, will not reach anywhere. anywhere. So Franklin, what's the way forward then? So, so the way forward is to make it clear.
mm -hmm. that the current disarray situation is not good for Ghanaians. Mm. We, as laboratory professionals, are very much concerned mm. because in the next moment, we are also at the receiving end as that clients. That is true. So we are properly guided to ensure that the right things are done. I must make the point that medical laboratory science is not subservient to any other professionals. We have evolved. Mm. It is natural that when these things started, naturally medical doctors, because they went to school, CCS mm. and the rest of us, when labs start, the highest we could go was certificate. Mm. But today, that is not the case. Nurses, pharmacists, medical laboratory professionals yeah. have PhDs amongst their ranks and fire. Mm. And so for medical doctors to insist that all these professionals are subservient to them and they must take the ultimate leadership, now they want to veer into our medical laboratory see? space. No, must they see? It is implied. What, what is stalling the implementation of the of the policy. Mm. Engage the minister. Let him tell you what is stalling such a powerful and workable document mm. that will make lab, that will transform our space as medical laboratory professionals. What is stalling it? Because medical doctors insist that they want to be the heads of the various laboratories. Mm. How I, can if, if there's this? no proof, I don't think you can state that, you know. Well, so engage boldly. the minister. Mm. If, he, if he has something contrary to say, let him come and say it. But it is our view. It mm. is our considered view mm. that what is stalling this workable policy, very important policy, from being implemented is because medical doctors want to head the various laboratories. And we insist that, that carpenters must supervise carpenters and not masons supervising carpenters. That's deep. That is our point. That's deep. That's deep. And so uh, we are just hoping that, you know, at the end of the day, we're going, we, we can actually get this policy to be implemented. That it's actually been passed. So now the next thing is for it to actually be put be into action. Implemented. And so I'm hoping that uh, that would actually be done as well. Sure. I'm wishing you all the best with your discussions uh, with the various agencies as well. And hopefully we'll hear good news uh, come a few weeks from now. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much uh, once again, uh, Mr. Franklin Ni Ama Amate. A Greater Accra Regional Chairman of the Ghana Association of Medical Laboratory Sciences, as well as Prosper Senyo Sokwe, Communications Team Member of the Ghana Association of Medical Laboratory Sciences. Thank you for joining us here on CB3 New Day.